In this video, I'm gonna show you how to go from one input to multiple outputs on wires. So the next thing I wanted to cover is splitting wires. Um, people seem to get really confused by this and the idea of splitting your connection. So let's say this is our input. This is coming from the controller, from outside of the light or uh, from the battery directly, you know, however you're running it. In my case, usually the power saver, and then it runs through the power saver and it comes into this junction here that'll be inside the light. Now, I might have a couple connections in between, usually waterproof connections, things like that, but this would be your main power line going into the light. And it comes into the light, and we're just going to split it just like so. So we got power coming in one way, and we want to split that to go two different directions. So how would we do that? Well, you might take two other wires, and you're going to splice those wires together just like so. Like that. Now you have two outputs here. Now we have to solder those together. For that, I would generally recommend using some kind of a shrink tubing, something like this that works pretty well. So just like that, I put the shrink tubing on here and I'm going to go ahead and wrap these together. Now when you're soldering wire together, you do want to try to keep it somewhat as slim as you can. You don't want to have a bunch of, you know, a big ball of, of wire sticking together. So the way I like to do it is I'll take these two wires and I'll just start wrapping them around each other. Now this is very easy to pull out until you get the solder on it. So like if you're not soldering, if you're just splicing wires together on a car and using electrical tape or something like that, you would not want to do this style. This style is really good if you're soldering because it keeps that low profile about the same uh, width as the wire itself, but it allows you to solder them together in a way that it's not going to go anywhere. And now this is a case where you can see I'm having to put a lot more time into this. This is not a two second deal. Uh, this is where the 245s really come in handy. I'm going to bump up to 430C on the wiring and that will help because you can see where it's just kind of balling up on top and that's where this heat comes in because it, the wire is a great conductor of heat. So it's transferring the heat down through the wire on both sides. And basically I just have to beat it by putting heat into the wire faster than it can transfer that heat to the outside of the wire. And that can be accomplished in two different ways. And that is with extra power. So you bump that up to like a 430, it'll transfer faster. Or you can use a broader tip or a fatter tip, like in the case of the 245s, it is a bigger surface area for all that heat to be in so it can transfer it better and hold that heat better. Whereas with the 210, it will drop a little bit faster. Now, obviously I was still able to overcome it and make it work. So if I was choosing between a 210 and a 245, I couldn't afford to do both. I would go with the 210 because I do think the 210 for anything more like if you're doing this type of stuff, you're soldering onto wires and you're soldering onto the uh, circuitry and uh, LED strips and things like that, you're going to really like the 210 over the 245. The 245 is good if you're doing stuff on cars a lot, you're soldering wires together, you're doing things like that on the larger scale, the 245 is pretty good for that. We have it soldered on there now, and you can just slide those right over. Hit that with some heat, uh, I use like a heat gun, and it works pretty well. Hit it with heat, and it will create your connection. So now you have one input, and you have two outputs that is your split and you can split this as many times as you want here is an example of a connector that i have made for testing on the bench i have a single input here that goes to the ghost controller or whatever controller i'm using in that case and then it comes up to here where i have four 12 volt output connections that I can connect different devices to. It also comes back to a five volt inverter that I have here and then forward from that inverter to four five volt, well actually five five volt connections that I have here that I can test different things on. So I have the 12 volt and the five volt connections. I can actually check both devices on a 12 volt ghost and it works perfectly fine. And you can see, I've just got everything spliced together. So I've got one data in here that splits off into be nine datas. So from one to nine datas, that's perfectly fine for the case of what I'm doing here, because all I'm doing, this is for testing purposes only. So normally I tell you guys to run stuff in series and not parallel. This is basically creating a bunch of parallel connections. 
which for testing purposes is exactly what I want. But inside of a light, you'll probably only do this with the power and the data you will want to go from one device to the next. So at the end of every strip, you have an output. So you have the input at the front, the output at the end, and from that output, you go into the next strip. So you would go from this strip, you would go into this strip. And then let's say you also want to add a UCS. You will have to keep in mind that on the UCS, it is 12 volt. You do need to separate power and ground for 12 volt and five volt. You do not want to run them on the same power. Uh, that will create a lot of issues. Don't do it. The data on the other hand is the same between 12 volt and five volt. It does not matter if you're running 12 or five, it's the exact same data. So you can share that between the two. So just separate those in your mind. Just think of it like you have power and ground, and you have data. They happen to run alongside of each other on the strip, but they are not inclusive to each other. They do not have to stay together. They can separate at any point and go in any direction that they want. You can have 12 volt power and ground powering your LEDs with the data line, and that same data line can go over to a five volt strip, but you must run five volt to that strip and not 12 volt. Make sure you don't have any 12 volt going. So at the end of it, you have a JST. You would not want to connect that output JST to the input on your five volt strip. You are going to be sending 12 volt from this strip to that five volt. Now you can, however, though, connect that data line to that five volt strip. Now let's say you want to use your JSTs and you want to, you know, you don't want to have to actually solder in those connections. Well, it's very simple. All you do is you just come here and you can see where I'm separating these wires and I can just cut my power and ground to the plug. And then the only thing going to that plug is the data. And in addition to that, I can actually inject power to my 12 volt strip from the backside, but I can also inject five volt power going to the JST. That way, anything that I plug in that is five volt will get five volt and the strip will only get 12 volt, but I have separated the two. That's the key point, the key point. You keep that 12 volt to the 12 volts, five volt to the five volts and nothing should cross and you won't have any issues. I do that stuff a lot, never have a problem. So that gives you an idea that is that is the way that I would split things off within the light using a splitter like this. And it can be split as many times as you need. If you need to inject power 10 times, you can inject it 10 times using this method here. You would just have 10 wires coming on this side and then one here. You can even go back and, you know, you want to get fancy. You could have the, the main power wire coming in. You got five going out this way and four coming out this way. And now we got one shrink tubing covering it all. You can get fancy like that all you want. This is a junction. That is all that is. This is a junction for when your power comes in and it splits off to whatever you need to split it off to. That is how you do it. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and make sure to check out nextlevelneo.com for all of your LED lighting needs. Thanks.